We're so, happy, so, so glad to have each of you with us today on Wednesday morning at 11 o'clock here at the Fowler Avenue Baptist Church. We meet on uh, Wednesday at 11 and Sunday morning right now. We plan to start Sunday school, not too, too many, too much longer. Uh, we'll be starting Sunday school again uh, soon. Right now we're just having uh, two services, but we're so glad you could come and be with us in the auditorium and then those who are viewing on the video that we have today. Uh, Ken Sager, one of our missionaries, and my son-in-law will be preaching this morning, and they'll be going back to New York uh, probably tomorrow afternoon. So I want to pray for them as they get ready to go back. Uh, they've been kind of under the weather, but Ken said he won't be getting next to anybody. He'll just stay away from you. But Ken, go ahead and get you one of a mic. Get a mic over there with Ken. So uh, Becky was a hacking. I mean, uh, uh, Elaine was hacking. She said, I said, just stay home. You don't want to get around anybody. That'll be fine. It'll be good. Well, we're so glad to have each of you. We thank God for your faithfulness. We're here to magnify the Lord Jesus Christ, our Savior. And uh, we'd like to start off by sharing a verse. The Bible says, this is good and acceptable sight of God, our Savior, who will have all men to be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth. There's but one God and one meter between God and men, the man Christ Jesus, who gave himself a ransom for all to be testified in due time. As we said before, the word ransom means a price was paid. The Bible says we're bought with a price. And uh, we thank God for that. The blood of Jesus Christ paid our sin debt in full. And so when we receive Christ as our Savior, uh, God's righteousness, Christ's righteousness was put to our account. It was imputed. So I'm thankful for what we have. God has made him to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteous of God in him. Hallelujah, what a Savior. Another one of our missionaries here, we appreciate Brother Gaines and uh, his wife, Shelley, and they have to come up here to the States in order that they might be able to uh, get all the work done where they go back and forth. I'm going to ask him to come on up just for a moment, if you would, Gaines. Come on up here just a minute. Give a word of praise and testimony. It's good to have each of you with us today. It's good to have Jim Paul. He'll be playing for us in a little bit. So we've got a lot of stuff lined up here today, and we thank God. Come on up, Gaines, and give us a word. Thank you so much. It's a, it's a good day to be in the house of God. It's always a joy to come here at, and be a pastor and each and every one of you. And um, I love this church even more because um, you always come and ask me to say something and I like, I love that. And I always, you know me for a number of years, I always have something to say. <laughs> and so it worked, it worked good in both ways. <laughs> As I was, um, I was, as he was, as I was driving, coming, I was thinking about these few words from um, the Word of God that God has given to us. In, in the book of Psalm 33, it, the psalmist um, is praising God for God's goodness. And in these few verses that I want to share with you, I hope it will be a blessing and encouragement to us this, this morning and throughout our life. He said, um, in verse number one, he said, Rejoice in the Lord. Now, um, some of you miss it, but the last time I was here, I preached a message entitled almost like that. Like um, the Apostle Paul reminded me, he said, Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say, Rejoice. And here the psalmist David is saying, Rejoice. So I went back and I tried to study this word, Rejoice. And if you do like I do, it's amazing how many times. God has used that one word in the Bible. He has used it so many times, I think uh, uh, over 150 times in the Old Testament, where God is encouraging his people, you and I that are called by his name, to rejoice because we know him as our savior, because we are born again into the family of God, because we are people of hope, Regardless of 2022 and 2023, we are a people of hope. We have hope, and our hope is in Jesus Christ. Amen. And we have inheritance, regardless of the stock market and inflation and all of that, that people are worried about. We have an inheritance that is on the file and will not fade away. And not only that, you know, think about it. Even debt with all that we are seeing on television, and the virus and whatever, however God may take us, 
Death has no victory over us. And we can rejoice in the Lord because death is swallowed up in victory. Amen. And we have the gift of everlasting life. Come on now, man. That's reason to rejoice. Amen. And not only that, we have the, the, a mansion in glory that is prepared by the Lord himself for us. Now I look at your television, man. Your television will blow me out of this. I don't know what the television is doing to me. I have to stop watching it, but I was watching this one program, not in news, where they're selling these houses, Brother Jared, and, and they sell one last, last night, they were showing it, for over 30 million US dollars. Now, who wants to live in a house that is over 30 million US dollars? That's a lot of maintenance. That's a lot of space that you may never be in this corner of the house in your whole lifetime. It's too huge. <laughs> but people are buying it because they, that's what they want. But in our part of the world, and in many parts of the world, and even here in the United States, many of us cannot conceive of that kind of money for a house. But that is what is happening. But I can rejoice because I have a mansion in glory. Right. And it's unlike any other thing that you can see on television, designed by the best architect in the world. Because our architect is none other than Jesus Christ himself. So when the psalmist say here, rejoice, I'm happy. Rejoice, he said, in the Lord, O you righteous. Praise his comely for the upright. He said, praise the Lord with harp. Sing unto him with palstry and an instrument of ten strings. Sing unto him a new song, man. Come on, let us rejoice. Uh, play skillfully with a loud voice. And I saw uh, my friend there yeah, coming in, and I, I, I was talking to her. I said, Shell, this guy is so blessed. He's so skillful. He come at his poor the moment and go on that piano and blah, 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 blah. You know, I try things. I'm not gifted in that area. Shell even buy me a guitar. It's sitting, <laughs> it's still sitting there. <laughs> <laughs> she said, she said Gage, you need to play, play something. I never play, I play the fools many times, but I can't play any instruments of music. But thank God for people that God has given in the house of God that are so skillful. He says, play skillfully with a loud noise. For the, for, for, for the word of the Lord is right. That's what we need. The word of the Lord is right. We need, David said it best. He said the word is a lamp and a light. We need the word of God and thank God that we have it in our home and we have it in church today. For the word of the Lord is right and all his works are done in truth. But I love this verse number five and I finish here. He loveth righteousness and judgment. And then the latter part of verse number five, he said, The earth is full of goodness of the Lord. And today when we watch television and the news, they're all trying to mess us up that everything is going bad. But listen, let me tell you something. They are good people all over the world right. and many good people are sitting right here in the church don't sell yourself short the word the, the bible said the whole world is full of good people we have some good people all over the world in in, in haiti in, in africa in india and all that and most of these good people are people who know the lord and when you know the lord then you can share his love and be kind and compassionate. And that is why in the house of the Lord, we shake hands, we smile, and we encourage each other. And that is why we are here this Wednesday morning, to be a blessing to each other, that we will hear from the word of God, we'll hear from these that are singing, all to glorify and exalt that name that is above every other name. So let us have that attitude of joy this 2022. That when we come into the house of God, there should be some kind of big smile on the face. Oh, praise God. It's good to see you. It's good to see you this Wednesday. It's good to see you Sunday. Let us have that attitude of praise in our heart. That attitude of joy. That the joy of the Lord in my heart and in my life may spread to you and you and your joy spread to, to me. And they, then what is going to happen? We're going to have a joy tongue time bomb. Everybody will be joyous. And that is what God is saying. Rejoice in the Lord. Have a happy Wednesday. Have a great, great 2022. Thank you, Pastor Tuning, right for God. being a friend and for being a friend to many, many missionaries all across the world. Thank you, church. You've been a blessing to Shelly and I and a blessing to the people in our part of the world. 
Praise and Pastor Kent, I preach for him too in New York. He's a blessing to many people there. And I've spent some time with him. So we're all here to do our part in rejoicing in the Lord. Thank you, Joseph. Thank you. Praise God. God. With you on this uh, first Wednesday of 2022. And this past Sunday, the first time I can remember missing a Sunday, the first Sunday of the new year. And uh, my wife and I had some type of New York-itis or something. And we're doing better. Thank God for that. But it's such an honor to be here with you today. And my desire with God's help is in these next few moments to try to visit with us about the subject of the true church. Thank God for Fowler Avenue Baptist Church and our church up in New York and other churches around the world that God has that are true Bible-believing churches made up of true Bible-believing people that are washed in the blood, born again, and on their way to heaven. Uh, millions and millions of souls attend some type of church that is not a true church. Uh, they don't preach the gospel. Uh, they have a form of godliness, but not denying the power thereof. All my life, <clears throat> until recently, I had a father who emphasized Hebrews 10, 25, not forsaking the assembling yourselves together, but so much the more as you see the day approaching. And ever since I've been married, and even before that, I've had a father-in-law who emphasizes church, amen? And church is important, praise God. Church is essential. And look with me, if you would, please, to Matthew chapter 16. Matthew chapter 16, looking together at verse number 18. Matthew chapter 16. And we see here about God's true church, that it's a powerful church. It's very powerful because it's founded upon Christ. It's to be precious. His church is precious because he purchased it with his own blood. And I thank the Lord today that the church of God is the pillar and ground of the truth. In Matthew chapter 16, the Bible says to us, And Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. In verse 16 and then 17, And Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood hath not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. And I say also unto thee, verse 18, That thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. The church is not founded upon Peter. Peter was not the first pope. Jesus is the founder of the church. Jesus is the cornerstone. He is the head of the church. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for your word. I pray you'd visit with us now. Lord, I pray the word of God would just bless our hearts. Thank you for this meeting already and the music and the prayers and the way it's already blessed us. God, I pray your blessings upon your word, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Yes, his church, his church is powerful because it's Christ's church. He's the foundation. He's the cornerstone. On 9-11, of course, it was the 20th anniversary of the attack on September 11, 2020, 2001. And our church, as we try to do every year, is go to a 9-11 memorial and a witness to people in this uh this year was no exception. It was a special time because it was fresh on people's mind. And people are taking gospel tracts like we were handing out candy. What a pleasant thing. It was just people were lined up asking for more gospel tracts. It was just a wonderful time in getting the gospel out and, and a praising the Lord. A beautiful, beautiful day. And thank God for churches that have the authority of God to get the gospel out in the days in which we live. Years ago, there was a Broadway actor and many people were listening to his performance and one of the things that he was quoting was the 23rd psalm and when he quoted the 23rd psalm people clapped and and cheered and then at the end of the performance he asked a, a retired preacher friend of his to come and say something and this retired preacher the only thing he did is he quoted psalm 23 the same psalm that the actor had quoted previously and when this retired preacher finished quoting psalm 23 Everyone got up with a standing ovation, clapping for him. And later the actor was asked, what was the difference between your quotation of the 23rd Psalm and the pastor's quotation of the 23rd Psalm? The actor said, the pastor knows the shepherd of the Psalm. And those in a true church know Christ, they're born again, and he is the founder of the church. And thank God for people like you that know how important church is. And thank God today that it's powerful because God is the, is the head. And God is not the author of confusion. How many know that we live in an age 
with great confusion. There's so much confusion, especially since March of 2020. So much nonsense. A lot of our cities in America today, uh, people do felonies and they get their hands slapped and get released the next day. Recently, a man in New York was arrested 83 times for shoplifting and released the next day. 83 times! And things are just out of hand. But the Bible says God is not the author of confusion. And the church is God's cornerstone. Praise the Lord today that we have the authority of God to shine the light of the gospel of Jesus Christ. A friend of mine recently was telling me that his family was visiting Mammoth Cave National Park in Kentucky. Maybe you've been there. And a huge, huge uh, cave, just amazing and earns its name Mammoth Cave. And he said in the large cavern uh, where uh, the ranger has a, a switch to turn out all the lights, at one point he turns out the lights and it's so dark you literally can't see your hand in front of your face. There's little fish in this cave, little tiny minnows, and they're blind because they have no need for eyes because it's so dark there. And he said on his watch, there was a little light that he never thought anything of, but he said in the darkness of that moment, when it was so dark, he couldn't see his hand in front of his face. He said that little light on his wristwatch shone like a mighty beam. And I'm so glad today that the darker the night, the brighter the light. And we today, as God's church, have the authority of God to shine the light. We are the light of the world. We are the salt given by God to preserve the society in which we live in. The society, thank God, is preserved by the church. As bad as things get, it would be much worse without the church. Amen. And thank God today for God and for the fact that he is the head of the church. Yes, the authority is God. And he is the owner. He is the one that we give glory and honor to. And praise the Lord. When every, anything goes well, it's all to God's glory. Amen. Anything good around his church, it's all to his glory. But he includes us in on some of it. He's such a gracious God. And anything that goes wrong is my fault as a pastor and my church. And praise the Lord today for the fact that Jesus is a cornerstone. Yes, it's a powerful church. It was founded upon Christ. And he promised he will build his church. And the gates of hell will not prevail against it. Since, set, since March of 2020, over 7,000 churches in America have closed. The church has been under attack. Many churches have endured fines just to stay open. And how sad that uh, the church is under attack, but his church will stay strong because he is powerful and God's church will be powerful. It may look bleak, but God will always come through. He who said to the waves, peace be still, and it was as calm as could be. He who said at the graveside of Lazarus, Lazarus come forth. And Lazarus came back from the, from the dead. If Jesus would have said come forth, we believe all the graves would have opened. That's the power of our God. And that same power is established in his church in the 21st century in this new year. Look with me, in that, if you now, would now please, to the book of Acts. Acts chapter 20. And verse number 28. Acts chapter 20, looking together there at verse number 28. Acts 20 and 28. The Bible says, take heed therefore unto yourselves. I remember uh, probably about 10 years ago, we had a pastor's fellowship at our, our church on a Tuesday morning. And we had everyone uh, uh, speak for seven minutes. When you have 25 pastors and missionaries speak for seven minutes, that's a minor miracle. And what we did, we had an egg timer. We had someone set the egg timer whenever it was anyone's time to speak. And somehow almost everyone finished before the, the egg timer went off. And one of the speakers there had been in the New York City area for many years. God had used him. And uh, he had a very successful uh, ministry in Brooklyn with a Christian school. And he had started another ministry out uh, far out on Long Island with a Christian school and a Bible college. And I remember he said that, he said, I have a full-time job just keeping myself straight. And when he said that, it just spoke to, spoke to my heart. And it's true. Uh, God, with his, in his wisdom, knows that we need to take heed to ourselves. And 
We have a battle against the world, the flesh, and the devil, but I tell you, there's victory in Jesus. Amen. Amen. First Corinthians 15 is 57, but thanks be to God, which gives us a victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Verse 28, take heed therefore unto yourselves and to all the flock over the which the Holy Ghost have made you overseer to feed the church of God, which he had purchased with his own blood. There it is, purchased with his own blood. The most valuable commodity there is, the blood of Jesus Christ. We were not redeemed with corruptible things as silver and gold, but with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. When I was a little kid growing up just uh, south of here in St. Petersburg, Florida, almost every, at least once every two weeks, my father would take us to get a haircut. He believed in very short hair for his boys. And I remember sitting there in this place called Web City, and uh, you would get a coupon for an ice cream cone when you got a haircut. And I was sitting there waiting for my father and my brother to get their haircut. I looked on the ground, and there was a ring, a diamond ring, sitting on the ground. I think I was eight years old, and I looked around to make sure so no one was looking. It was a crowded barber shop. And I stuck my foot out, and I pulled it in, and I reached down on the ground, and without anyone looking, I put it in my pocket. And I was so excited. And I got home, and I showed it to Dad. And Dad, being a good Christian man, he called the barber shop and said, my son found a ring, and we want to make sure that if someone claims that they get it back. And, and I, I was so excited about it and found out that it was real. Thank God for real faith in Christ and that Jesus Christ in us, the hope of glory, gives us hope in this present world in which we live. And the blood of Christ has purchased his church, and the church is the people of the living God. For the first seven years of our church, Grace Baptist Church, we met at a YMCA. It was so busy that we could only rent it out for three hours on a Sunday morning. The rest of the week was so busy we could never get it uh, to rent it out for anything. And, and we uh, were reminded over and over again, the church is not the building. The church is the people of God. Now, a building is important, but the church is the people. Thank the Lord for you that love the Lord. We've been purchased with his own blood. We are precious. His church is precious because it's by the blood of Jesus Christ. Just two weeks ago, a family probably hadn't been in our church in five years. The mother hasn't been saved. The father made a profession of faith. Uh, the daughter is in her early 20s, and she made a profession of faith a few years ago. And they had gotten away from the things of God and gotten out of church. And, and uh, they came back, and I remember uh, just two weeks ago, the uh, daughter said, Oh, I sense the presence of God. There's something powerful about the true church. It's purchased with his own blood. Amen. Several years ago, uh, we were across the street at a business, and there was a, a man that owns a business, a Greek man. And he said, I was down in North Carolina. And he said, everywhere I looked, I saw Baptist, Baptist, Baptist. And he said, I never see any of those around here except for your church. And the friend I was with from uh, uh, Evangelist, he said, it's good that he saw that because he probably thought you were a cult. And to go to a Bible Belt and see Baptist churches everywhere, that was a good experience. But the true church is a blood-washed, born-again, saints of God called out. And we have the authority of heaven to conduct our business, to witness for Jesus, to do missions like this church does and preach the gospel. What a privilege to preach the gospel, to proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ. Yes, it's precious. His church is beyond monetary value. Thank the Lord today that we have his church and we're to protect what's valuable. It's precious, amen. We're to protect it. It's precious to God and it's precious to God's people and it's precious to people like you that are here on a day like today to honor and glorify him and come here to be blessed, amen. Isn't it a blessing to be around God's people? Iron sharpens iron. You know, you can be feeling a real little bad and you go to church and get perked up. Has that ever happened to you? Yeah. It's amazing. And God's, God's plan works. He has a wonderful plan, amen? It truly works. His church, beyond a shadow of a doubt, is powerful. It may not always look powerful, but because Jesus is the founder, Jesus is the author, Jesus is the head, it's a powerful church. And it's also a very precious church. And every one of his children are great value. And every one of God's children's part are very important in the, in the work of God. Look with me now to another scripture, 1 Timothy, if you would please. 
1 Timothy uh, chapter 3, as we consider God's powerful church, God's precious church, and how God can use us to protect what's valuable to him in these days in which we live and where the book of Revelation becomes so very, very meaningful to us in these days. And we see uh, things going on around us and his return getting so very close. Someone said the outlook may be getting dim, but the outlook is getting brighter every day. Yet last night, my wife said, it's supposed to snow Thursday night and we're flying to New York. And I thought, I don't know if I want to go back to that snow and ice or not. <laughs> I really don't know if I want to do that. And if it does snow, I hope it's so bad that our, our plane gets uh, changed till the next day or something. But anyway, I remember as a kid, my father going to uh, Michigan with our family during Christmas to visit my grandmother, his mother. And it was freezing cold in Michigan. The first time in my life, uh, my dad, when I was a little kid, he took us ice fishing. And I remember walking out on that ice. You know, pastors can walk on water as long as it's frozen. My father-in-law did it when Ken Jr. was born. We went ice fishing with him, and he came back and told the church, I heard he walked on water. It was frozen water, but he did. And uh, I remember catching these little yellow perch and throwing them out on the ice, and they froze solid. And I remember taking them home to my grandmother's house and turning on the, uh, turning on the water, and they started flopping around after being frozen solid. I was amazing. I never forgot that. And I said all that to say this. On the way home from that Christmas trip, somewhere about South Georgia, we got on the right side of the jet stream. It was freezing cold north of the jet stream, and we got out of the car at a rest area in South Georgia. It felt like we were in heaven. I mean, it felt so warm. There's a reason why millions of people come to Florida in, in the wintertime, and have been for many years. And I praise the Lord for the, for the nice weather God, God gives the Southland. And we're headed to a place where everything is absolutely perfect. A lot of people in New York think Florida is like perfect. But you know, there are problems in, everywhere, amen? And there are difficulties, and we know that God has that place for us forever and ever, where everything's okay in our Father's house. His church is powerful. His church is precious. And His church here in 1 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 15, if you'll look there with me, the Bible says, But if I tarry long that thou mayest know how thou oughtest to behave thyself in the house of God, which is the church of the living God, the pillar and ground of the truth. We're responsible for the truth in society. Jesus taught, and you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. So many different opinions and various thoughts, of, schools of thought, especially in the last almost two years now, variations and just confusing material. And God says that he is not the author of confusion. And through it all shines God's pillar of truth, his church. And his truth is marching on through us, God's people, and his church. His church is the pillar and ground of the truth. His church is powerful. After the virus got so bad in March of 2020, the Lord called my father to home, uh, home to heaven. And we came down here and had a, some difficulty traveling because of the virus restrictions, but we were able to come here and at his funeral service, like so many people had to have such a small little limited amount of people and at the funeral home. They told us at the funeral home, don't even bother going to the uh, Florida National Cemetery where well, your father's going to be buried. They won't allow you to get in because of the COVID and you can't go in. If you want to, you can follow the hearse up to the cemetery gate, but you can't go in. And so uh, we went as far as we could, got close to the close to the cemetery and we followed the hearse right up to the gate and we sat there and sat there and probably 30 minutes took uh, uh, passed and, and no one came out and the hearse went a little further into the cemetery. So I, I told uh, my wife and my son, I said, I'm gonna follow the hearse. And my wife said, she's very cautious and very careful. It's amazing how wives compliment their husbands that God gives good wives. And, and uh, I said, well, so I, just wanna, I just wanna follow this hearse. And she said, you wanna go to jail? I said, no. And so we, uh, we followed very closely, and 
and we got to meet the man that was the head of the cemetery, the Florida National Cemetery, the second busiest uh, national cemetery in all of America. And uh, it turned out that he was a born again believer. And he invited us to come up to the graveside to watch the proceedings of my father was to be buried. And I knew that was a hand of God to be able to see that. And as we were praying, as the men were preparing and talking to this man, he said, please pray for my mother. She has COVID up in Detroit and, and she's very serious. Can you pray for her? And so we were, we were able to <clears throat> pray for him and pray for his mom. And, and a couple of days later, he, he called and he said, oh, thank you for praying. My mom's better. And, and he invited us to come back and we wanted to have a ceremony at the cemetery. And it was just one of those divine appointments that God has for his children. Uh, we have a, a powerful family, the church of God and born again Christians have what's in common in Christ because of his precious blood. Thank the Lord today for the precious blood of Christ, God's son, that cleanses us from all sin. The church is the pillar and ground of the truth. There are a lot of people in leadership in America today who need the truth that the church has founded upon this precious book, amen? People have departed from the truth. They have come to a point where they deny God and hate the things of God and teach our young people anti-Bible, anti-decency. And I thank the Lord today for the church that stands strong and stands for the Lord. And it's God who will build his church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. Thank God today for a church like this church. I remember uh, one of the first times I ever preached years ago in Chiefland, Florida. And I was filling in, I was so nervous, and I didn't know it, but the pastor was leaving, was sitting there. And I was reminded of that today when uh, Brother Pierre said, there's five pastors here today. And I had a few butterflies, I felt a little nervous. <laughs> and the pastor was sitting there, and I could tell he was critiquing me, and I was so nervous anyway, and I was ex extra nervous. And after the message, <clears throat> he called me over the side and said, young man, you'll find that in your ministry, that you'll mellow. And later, I looked up the word mellow and it said on the verge of rotting. <laughs> I'm glad as a church we don't have to rot. We can stay strong for God because His truth is marching on. His church is the pillar and ground of the truth. And all glory be to God Amen. that He's helped us to stay established in the truth. And we haven't done as so many in and turned away from the truth and gone away with every wind of doctrine tossed to and fro, but stand strong because of him, not in our own strength, but in his strength. Praise God today that his church is precious. You're precious. Thank God his church is powerful. Let's remember that his word is powerful. His gospel is powerful. For I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. For it's the power of God and the salvation. Let's keep serving God. Let's keep being faithful to his church and praying and seeking God's face and seeing what God will do. And God can still send revival to his churches. Thank the Lord today for the church, the pillar and ground of the truth. His truth is marching on. A little over 90 years ago in 1929, there was a man who was suffering with shingles like my father-in-law had this past fall. Very, very painful. He was very discouraged because his business was going bankrupt. He was so discouraged and despondent and depressed. He actually ended up in an insane asylum in 1929. He considered taking his life out of the chapel of that facility. He heard, God will take care of you. The song. And he remembered being raised in a Baptist preacher's home and his grandfather and great-grandfather were Baptist preachers and he began to be encouraged. He began to pray and seek God. And God convinced him not to give up and keep being faithful despite wanting to do his life, take, take his life own life. Years later, God blessed his business. He became world famous. He had 1,660 stores. Back in the early 70s, he was making, his stores were making $4 billion a year. He would not allow his 
employees to smoke or drink. He encouraged them to go to church. He was a wonderful born again, Bible believing man. And we know him as J.C. Penney. He did not give up. He kept seeking God's face. He kept trusting God. And God saw him through and gave him great victories. And God has his hand on his Bible-believing churches. And he is not finished with his church. He has not divorced his bride, amen. And his truth is powerful. His truth is precious. And his truth is the pillar and ground of the truth. And is to be guarded. It's precious by his children. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for your word. I thank you for these dear people gathered here on this midweek service. And Lord, we pray that you'll help me and these my friends, my brothers and sisters, God, to experience a wonderful new year in Christ. May we walk with you every step of the way. May we praise you every day and bless us, Lord. And God, I pray for the precious souls that are touched by this ministry here that you'll save those that know not Christ, and you'll, Lord, you'll encourage every born-again believer. Thank you for the talents and the, and the yielded hearts of people that are members and friends of this ministry. And God in heaven, I pray you'll bless the pastor and the missionaries and each preacher here today and every born-again believer in Christ. Thank you, Lord, for your love for us. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you all. We love you. Thank you, Brother Kent. In closing this part out, we will always like to take time to ask those who are viewing the video, walk down memory lane to the time and place where you know that you know you ask the Lord Jesus Christ to be your Savior. I would say not just know about Him or know of Him, but you can see, you, you remember the time when you said, Lord Jesus, I know you're the Son of God. I know you died on Calvary and shed your blood. Now it's the blood of Jesus Christ that cleanses from all sin. Lord Jesus, come into my heart and save me. Have you done that? If you have, you can do it today. If you're doubting your salvation, if there's any question, you are watching on video. Today is the day of salvation. It may not be a tomorrow, but we've got today. You want to ask Christ to be your Savior. Pray this simple prayer. Lord Jesus, I believe you're the Son of God. I believe you died on that cross and shed your blood. Jesus, come into my heart and save me. I'm not trusting baptism. I'm not trusting uh, water baptism. I'm not trusting religion. But Jesus, I'm trusting you. You're the one that died and rose again the third day. And Lord Jesus, thank you for dying in my place. Thank you for saving me. I praise you and give you glory. Father, it's our prayer. Those that have done that, find a good Bible-believing church. Get into the Word of God and grow in the grace of and knowledge of Jesus Christ. Father, help us here at the church to be faithful, to serve you. Keep on keeping on. Many have many things on their plate. Many are hurting in different ways. But, oh God, we thank you that you've told us, be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. For as much as you know, your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you for this message. Thank you for the truth. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, amen. Again, we're so glad that you've come. And as I thank of Brother Ken and the work, he went there, he was working in a, a camp. there about 100 miles away from the city. And then God burned him to go to the city and start a church. He worked there at a camp for how many years were you at the camp? Ten years. Huh? Ten years. Ten years at the camp, working with the boys and girls and young people that had come in. And then God led him to go into New York and start a work. I think of Becky and he going to the YMCA every Sunday when they'd meet, put the thing up, and I put it down. And they kept doing that. And one day they got they got word that somebody was going to give them a church. I don't know how it all I don't know how it all come about, but God is faithful in me. Amen. And here, after serving all these years in different ways, God gave them a building. Free. It needed some work on it. But here you got a building. Where is it located? Franklin Square. Franklin Square, right close to the racetrack there in, in uh, New York. And I look back, and I look over their ministry, and I say, thank God for his faithfulness and their work. And it's just the way that God has worked in their life. And we thank God for that. Thank God for the way God has worked in your lives. And you're special in this church right here. We thank God for each of you.
your time, your talent, your treasure, just being here serving your Savior. Keep up the good work. We're on the winning team, aren't we? Amen. We're redeemed by the blood of Christ. Precious. We're the pillar and ground. And the Bible Amen. says we're his purchased possession. Amen. Bought with a price. And thank God our salvation is forever, never end. Amen. Redeemed by the blood of Christ. Any other words you'd like to share?